Well, every blessing to you all and welcome back to my open air pulpits, a breezy and cold day, but I wanted to come up to the pulpit anyway and give you all a quick update. We were very blessed to travel to the city of Nottingham and distribute around 1500 tracks and our banner was seen by around 5000 people. A great outreach, a good time for fellowship and I've also been busy continuing to work through the book of Exodus and please join me this coming Sunday if you are free at 11 a.m. UK time as I work through the Ten Commandments and Lord willing I will look at the Ninth Commandment. But a couple of nights ago I was reading the Epistle of James which I know for Martin Luther was a problem and I know some of our dispensational brethren look at James's Epistle and are of the opinion that somehow it's not for the church but for tribulation saints. That is incorrect. Always remember that when this book first came out, it was written to a group of people, whether it was James, Ezekiel, or Daniel. There was a group of people that would read such a book, and of course James's epistle was written to saved Jews. But I read this a few nights ago, and I thought it'd be worth coming up to the open-air pulpit and putting my thoughts down on camera. James chapter 2, James chapter 2, look at verse 8, if you will. If ye fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself, ye do well. Paul told you from Romans 13 that if you love your neighbour as yourself, you have fulfilled the law. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. Like favoritism, if you have a favourite or if you are closer to certain groups of people and you show those people favoritism, you do more for those people than other people, you are guilty of favoritism. And on top of that, you are convinced of the law as a transgressor, which quite simply means this, that when a Christian goes into a verse, when a Christian starts to do what they should not do, they go back under the law. They resurrect the old man or the old woman and now they are guilty of being a transgressor. But of course, Christ became a curse for us. The lawgiver has already covered our sins when we breach his law. Look at verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, which of course is impossible, but if you were able to keep the whole law, like the Lord Jesus Christ was able to do, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So therefore, the way the Bible is laid out, it's done in such a way that you can't possibly, you can't possibly keep the law. If you break one part of the Ten Commandments, you've broken all parts of the Ten Commandments. And the reason why that is laid out in such a way is so that nobody can arrive in eternity and start to boast about how wonderful they were, because nobody is good, only God is good. Look at verse 11. For he that said, do not commit adultery, could be physical adultery, could be spiritual adultery. If you use some of these modern Bibles, or if you go to apostate churches, that's adultery in a spiritual sense, which leads into idolatry. Said also, do not kill. You are told if you are angry with your brother without a cause, or if you have unjust anger in your hearts, you are guilty of murder. Now, if thou commit no adultery, let's say you haven't committed adultery, whether physically or spiritually, yet if thou kill unjust hatred, anger in your heart, thou art become a transgressor of the law. You've broken the law. And now you're under the condemnation, the severe condemnation of the Lord, because you are a lawbreaker. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. So quite simply, when you got saved, you were transformed or transferred translated and of course confirmed to be a child of God you passed from death unto life you've been set free from the penalty of those that break the law go to Romans chapter 8 Romans chapter 8 Paul told you he could do all things through Christ which strengthened him and Romans chapter 8 picks up on our standing and of course standing in state when it comes to the Christian may not always be the same. Your standing, as far as God is concerned, is perfect, but your state will fluctuate. 
Romans 8, look at verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You walk in the Spirit, you yield to the Holy Ghost. You don't commit the sins of the flesh, like favoritism, like murder, like adultery. You start walking in the Spirit, you start feeding the flesh, you start to backslide. The sins of the flesh come along. Uh, you've just seen three of them from James chapter 2. For the law of the spirits of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. He conquered death for every man. He went to the cross, despising the shame for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You walk in the Spirit, you enjoy the fruits of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. There are nine fruits of the Spirit, but if you stop walking in the Spirit, and you start to feed the flesh, you end up backsliding, and you become guilty of a lawbreaker, and the consequences are going to follow. Go to Psalm 103, Psalm 103. So the way this book is laid out, it's laid out in a way that you can't get around it. Nobody's going to be just waved in. There has to be consequences. If you do well, you are obviously going to be rewarded at the judgment seat. If you don't, you will be condemned, not necessarily in a severe way. It could be in a temporary way. What did I say? Psalm... 103, Psalm 103. It's very windy this morning, very cold, but I wanted to come up anyway and just try and explain James chapter 2 with Romans chapter 8. Like I say, your standing in states may not always be the same. As far as God is concerned, you are free from sin and the condemnation of sin, but when you backslide, when you go back into the old man, you resurrect the old man. Uh, Psalm 103, Psalm 103. Look at verse uh, 12, if you will. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. That is wonderful. So as far as God is concerned, he has saved us from all of our past, present, and future sins. The atonement is completely down to him. We don't save ourselves. We don't help Almighty God to keep us saved. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says how God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing our trespasses unto us, and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. We beseech you in Christ, Christ Jesus to be reconciled to him. And also from uh, verse uh, 21 it says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So take all these verses together, from James chapter 2, dealing with what happens when you start to backslide and you start to resurrect the old man or the old woman. Technically, you become a transgressor of the law, a breaker of the law. And when you break the law, there are consequences. That's what the judgment seat of Christ is all about. But when you walk in the Spirit, Romans chapter 8, and you continue in the Spirit, Romans chapter 8, you are free from the condemnation that continues to abide on those that are not saved. Psalm 103 makes it very clear in a beautiful sense how he's already separated sin from the east to the west and has already provided an atonement for us. And also and finally, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, how Christ became sin for us. So salvation is on the Saviour. He keeps us saved, we don't keep ourselves saved, but he expects us to walk in the Spirit, to enjoy the fruit of the Spirit, and not to become a breaker of the law, a transgressor. And if we do that, we stay on the straight and narrow, as they say. We, we uh, enjoy the perfect peace, which passes all understanding. And hopefully when the judgment seat of Christ comes around, we won't be too severely punished and chastised. But when it comes to our salvation, Psalm 103, it's a done deal. Praise the Lord for that wonderful thoughts and statements. And may the Lord bless you all. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.